The Oscar's treasure chest is a Rubik's Cube with a secret compartment inside that can only be accessed once the cube is solved. It's a fun idea in theory, but in practice, it's not really that secure because anybody can solve a Rubik's Cube given some YouTube videos and enough time. So how do we make it more difficult to get inside? Well, what if, instead of opening up once the cube is solved, we modify it so that it only opens up once the cube is scrambled into a very specific position? Maybe you memorize the algorithm to get it into that position, you're the only person who knows it, it's like your secret password, and now you're the only one who can get into your treasure chest. I mean, there's 43 quintillion different scrambles on a Rubik's Cube, so if you just used a random one, there'd be no way for anybody to ever guess your combination. And the best part? This mod is super quick and easy. All you need to do is come up with your secret scramble, remove all the stickers from your treasure chest, and then without turning it, add a new set of stickers on to perfectly match your scramble. Your treasure chest will now look like it's scrambled, but since you haven't turned it at all, it'll still open up just like this, but only while it's in your secret position. Cool, right? The only problem is that this Oscars treasure chest is very sentimental for me. I got it over eight years ago. It's a special Mefferts anniversary edition with the cool stickers, and there is no way that I'm going to be modifying this just for a video. Now, I could have just planned ahead and bought another one, but since that didn't happen, we're going to do it the hard way instead. What I actually bought was one of these Yushin treasure chests, or magic box cubes. Now, this is exactly the same concept, just with a different mechanism. The only problem is that I bought the stickerless version. So we can't really do the mod that I just described because you can't really take the stickers off of a stickerless cube. So I guess we're gonna have to get a little bit creative with the mechanism to pull this off. Anyway, I've never tried out the Yushin treasure chest before, so let's spend a minute to check it out. It's a much cheaper alternative to the original Oscar treasure chest, just $14 at thecubicle.com compared to over double that for the original. And as always, you can use discount code Z3Cubing for 5% off, link in the description. Comparing the two, you can see that the Yushin treasure chest is much bigger, and it's absolutely massive compared to a normal sized Rubik's Cube. It comes in both black and stickerless, whereas the original only came in stickered, but the biggest difference between the two is the locking mechanism. As you can see on the original, all the pieces that make up the opening are keyed so that they only fit together in this one particular way, whereas the Yushin one is quite a lot more complicated. I believe the way it works is once the cube is solved, you can push down the white center like this, and then you actually unscrew the white side by turning it counterclockwise until it pops off just like that. And even though the cube itself is bigger, the opening is quite a lot smaller. This cube that I used in the intro no longer fits, so I guess we'll have to use a smaller one instead. One cool thing though, is that the top layer will not fall apart once you open it, whereas on the original version, it definitely will fall apart if you're not careful. The bottom part of the cube will come apart if you try, but it's very easy to keep it together. And then once you wanna put the lid back on, all you have to do is screw it back on until the cube is solved. And then all you have to do to get the center to pop back up is to just grab the white side like this and pull upwards. So just like that, and now your Rubik's Cube is fully functional again. Overall, I'm not as big of a fan of this locking mechanism. It's a little bit more work to open and close, and it's also easier to cheat, which I'll show you in a second. But the one big advantage of it is that it actually means that the cube turns pretty darn well. It's definitely not a flagship speed cube, and the big size does make it a little bit awkward to turn, but I would say it's definitely on par with a lot of budget speed cubes. That's in comparison to the original, which, well, has absolutely zero quarter cutting. Oh, and as for cheating, it's very easy to do on both of them. On the original, you just have to finish F2L, except that you can insert the F2L pairs in whatever slots you want, and the top will still come off just like that. And it's even worse on the Yushin. All you have to do is finish the white side, and there we go, it's open. Even the most clueless non-cuber, if they knew this exploit, could probably get the Yushin one open, whereas the original at least takes a little bit more skill. But let me show you how this exploit works, that way I can explain how we're going to modify it to work with our secret scramble. So the first thing you might notice is that there's no keyed mechanism at all between the two halves. In fact, the locking mechanism does not depend at all on the bottom of the cube. This can be in any possible position and it'll still work. Of course, this will make our secret scramble modification a little bit less secure, but no worries because it'll still be very hard to guess the correct combination of these other nine pieces. But how does the locking mechanism work? How can this cube tell once all the white pieces are on the same side? Well, let's go ahead and unscrew this screw and see what we can see. Now with a little bit of effort, we can pop out this plastic piece, which is basically the lid that screws onto there. And as you can see, around the outside, there's these eight holes into it, which correspond to one hole for each of the white corners and edges. So imagine this piece is still screwed in there. What actually happens when you push the white center up is it sticks eight little arms up through the holes and all of the white corners and edges, and those kind of latch on to the little holes in this piece. That's what holds everything together as you're opening the cube, and because the white pieces are the only ones that have those little holes in them, that's why the cube only opens when the white side is solved. So, how do we make this cube open only once we've done a specific scramble on it, since it's stickerless and we can't just swap the stickers around? 
Well, basically what we do is we take each of the pieces that are a part of this white side, like this yellow and orange edge right here, and then we poke little holes on them while filling in all the holes on the original white side. That way the cube will only open when it's in this scramble. Or at least when these nine pieces are arranged together like this, but I think that's still a sufficiently tricky combination to guess. So as you can see, a couple of these pieces are white, so they already have the holes in them. We just have to drill the holes into the remaining seven pieces, and then of course, fill in the holes in the original white pieces so that we can't still open the cube just by solving the white side. So I might have to get a little bit creative to figure out how to fill these holes, but other than that, this mod doesn't sound like a whole lot of work, so let's go ahead and start the time lapse. And here are all the pieces of the modified cube. As you can see, all of the old white pieces now have their hole filled in with the help of a creatively used 3D printer. And all the pieces on the top face of our new scramble now have holes on them. That was also pretty easy. So now let's go ahead and get this reassembled by screwing this screw in. And there we go. Now with the top layer assembled, I can tell that the pieces are wobbling around a little bit more than they were before. I think that's because the holes I drilled were a little bit bigger than the original ones, but that shouldn't affect the turning at all once the cube is assembled. So let's go ahead and screw it back in, just like that. And now we can pop that center back into place. And while we're at it, let's also peel off this logo sticker because no one likes logos. And there we go. Here is our scrambled treasure chest. As you can see, I've perfectly matched the original scramble I was going for. Bonus points to whoever can tell me what the significance of the scramble is. I promise there is a very good reason for using this one in particular. Anyway, let's go ahead and solve the cube real quick. Now, despite all the pieces being in the exact same spots as before, that's the cool thing about doing this with a stickerless puzzle. As you can see, the white center does not press down at all. Instead, to get inside, you have to do the secret algorithm that only I know. Extra bonus points if you can give me an optimal 18 move algorithm for the scramble that I showed you. And there we have it. Now that the cube is in our secret position, we can go ahead and pop down the white center and unscrew it and get to what's inside. So yeah, I think this is a pretty awesome way to add a secret combination to your treasure chest. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it the way that I did with a stickerless cube. If I were to do it again, I'd definitely use an original Oscars treasure chest and swap around the stickers like I talked about originally. Another big downside of this one is you can actually cheat, even with the scrambled version, by peeking inside the cube to see where the holes are. So even if it's all scrambled up, you can go ahead and look inside and say, oh, that edge must be part of the solution because it has a hole in it, whereas this corner piece is not. So probably still effective against most wood be Rubik's Cube Thieves, especially since you really can't tell the difference between this and any other speed cube, but I definitely would go with this one if you want the utmost insecurity. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed my modification to make a treasure chest cube way more difficult and way more secure, because that's pretty much it, and I'll see you guys next time.